Okay, hi everyone. Just wanted to jump on because there's been some breaking news as you can see to the side of me here. Shinzo Abe, the Prime Minister of Japan, has just resigned for health reasons. Um, this isn't the first time. Actually, he did resign back in 2007 for actually the same reason. Uh, he suffered for many years for or from uh, ulcerative colitis, which is an inflammatory bowel disease. Uh, but his condition is said to have worsened recently. I think he's been back and forth in hospital over the course of the last week. Um, he does, though, resign now as Japan's longest-serving prime minister. Uh, his current period in office began in 2012. Uh, again, he was previously but there, but he had to step down back in 2007. It was when he uh, previously had a flare-up of this case. At this point in time, I can't really see him coming back again. Um, but... We wish him, wish him and his family well, of course, and uh, hope he makes a speedy recovery. But the big question here for traders is, really, what does this mean? Uh, we've seen the Japanese yen appreciate quite considerably so far this morning, so I wanted to just quickly cover off a few basics about Abenomics, which is the main thing and reason why the market is reacting. And the yen might perhaps, if you're not used to markets or Japanese policy, be slightly counterintuitive because the currency is actually strengthening from his resignation, and I'll explain why. Uh, first of all, Abe, bit of background about him as a character. He's got a bit of a reputation as a staunch conservative and a nationalist uh, for stimulating growth with aggressive economic policy, and that economic policy is called Abenomics. Um, Abe and his cabinet, uh, as a timeline here, uh, they will continue to run the government until a new premier is elected, um, but could not adapt or adopt any new policies. The winner of the party election would then hold a post until the end of Abe's LDP term, which is in September of 2021. Uh, he was asked who's going to replace him this morning in a press conference, and he said it's not his choice going forward. Um, all right, well, what is Abenomics is the main thing. Um, Abenomics is a set of policies that came up when he introduced them in uh, coming into power in 2012. And basically, it follows what we call three arrows, the old age kind of uh, Japanese thinking that three is stronger than one in terms of unified policy approach is kind of the, the, the idea here. And the main one of this and the one that which markets are particularly sensitive to is the first arrow. And the first arrow is monetary policy. Uh, monetary policy, Japan's hyper easy monetary policy in the form of negative short term interest rates was put in place to make it cheaper for consumers and companies to borrow money and spend. So one of the main things here was when this Abenomics was first adopted in 2012, we did actually see some early optimism in markets contributing to a doubling of Japanese stocks uh, in the equity market and a slump in the currency boosted by tourism. Um, the actual goal here ultimately was to spur inflation, which has always remained particularly elusive in Japan, despite the amount of monetary easing which they've conducted. Proponents of Abenomics see then that Japan's mammoth purchases of government debt is really the only way to shake off the threat of deflation uh, and avoid more stagnation in their economy. Now, a couple of things have happened since then. Obviously, the Bank of Japan, as we know, have moved rates into negative territory uh, as of early 2016 in order to further encourage spending. And that's now been pushed back the projected time frame for reaching its 2% inflation goal no fewer than um, I think six times or so. You know, we talk about the Fed and their policy tweak we had uh, yesterday, of course, now we're averaging that out. Uh, and this is a real reason why in Japan, for example, they, they continue to miss that target. Um, other abonomic policies include cutting corporation taxes, urging Japan's state pension fund to buy riskier assets as well. So the other two arrows here, other than monetary policy, uh, is fiscal stimulus, pumping money into the economy, which means the government's spending more money on things like infrastructure, financial incentives to companies like tax breaks, as I just mentioned, and then structural reforms. Structural reforms would be corporate reform, adding more women into the workplace, labour liberalisation, allowing migrants into the workforce, uh, all these other things to help uh, accelerate economic growth. Now, if we actually look at the market then, how has it reacted so far? If I just quickly switch over my screens, this has been the initial reaction. I'm looking here at dollar yen in the futures market, and you can see as soon as those news reports started to come out, the timing of this has been uh, basically uh, an, an initial news report overnight speculating, and then he later came out and now has confirmed in the press conference officially that he is resigning due to ill health. 
So the yen has been strengthening. We got close up to around the 107 handle uh, initially. You can see then in terms of this recent price movement that we have had in dollar yen, largely driven by obviously um, weakness, uh, if you like, initially in the dollar. But then the dollar came back over overnight. Some of this idea about with the um, yield curve steepening, as I discussed in the briefing this morning, we moved up. However, now the yen's kind of taken over on the back of this news, and and all of this is basically on the back of the fact that it's going to be an unwinding, perhaps, of abenomics and this whole push and quest for hyper easy monetary policy going forward. And so just. Um, resulting as well in some repatriation flows back into the yen. Um, and so, yeah, we're right back down. We've lost already about 100 pips plus at the moment. Um, we're down at the S1 on the daily pivots. In a longer time frame, looking on the weekly, um, where we briefly flirted with back on around this time last month on the 27th uh, is quite an interesting technical point. Uh, if the yen does continue to strengthen against the dollar, um, and that could well possibly be the case because generally the dollar is is somewhat in a weakened state fundamentally now, given the low rate mentality that's being adopted by average inflation targeting. So if the yen does start to strengthen, um, that would be a key level to look out for. Run 0414 here, looking on the weekly candlesticks here at, at dollar yen, you can see the market has respected this on multiple times over the course of several years. We then had the actual uh, pandemic low point when uh, we were in right in the midst of that volatility period. That was when equities were really selling off hard globally. So people flocking to the traditional safe havens like the yen. That was when we hit that original low at 101.14. I have actually seen banks like JP Morgan being out in recent times speculating that if um, Abe were to resign and uh, then the let's say the disintegration of Abenomics, then potentially we could see a $100 yen um, price point, no specific time frame there, but uh, and that's a long way off, but not massively unrealistic. We were uh, trading back around those levels only in around 2016 type era. Uh, so yeah, a couple of long term considerations there. Um, in terms of his replacement, um, I'm going to put a link into this video if you want to have a read a bit more specifically about who those replacements are, what is their background. What is their political leaning and therefore what is the potential for the longevity or not of Abenomics? Um, that's going to be really key is who is his replacement. And if I jump to this article here, it's on Reuters. Um, Tara Asso, the, the finance minister, um, also doubles up as a deputy prime minister. Uh, there's a few others as well. The hawkish former defense minister, uh, the foreign minister. I'll let you consume this in your own time. Uh, we're probably not going to have anything immediate there's going to be lots of jostling, of course, for political advantage here, I'm sure, even within uh, his own party. Uh, but this would definitely be worth reading in advance of that to really understand a bit more how the yen might react. Um, yeah, and then there's been a couple of good tweets as well uh, that I've uh, been resharing. Uh, my Twitter handle is here, so feel free to check that out. But look, short, sharp. I hope that was useful and gets you up to speed with things just generally. And uh, yeah. Shinzo Abe has, has resigned. Take care.